Hello everyone, welcome back. And yesterday, Barcelona disappointingly lost to PSG. And I think there have been a lot of reactions from Barcelona fans. Some people saying Frank de Jong should be sold. Some people said Lewandowski should be sold. Araujo should be sold. I mean, there, there have been a lot of reactionary opinions from Barcelona so far. And, and I understand this, you know, it's, it's frustrating because... Barcelona, they, they could have had so much more from that game. They could have really gone far in this tournament, and they just threw it away. It was in their hands. They had one foot into the semifinals, and they threw it away. It's really disappointing. So I basically, because we've had time to sit and think about it, I just wanted to give my opinion on some of these reactionary takes that we've seen from Barcelona fans. And the first thing that I've seen is that this team needs an entire rebuild. You know, it's just Barcelona's not ready for the Champions League. And I completely disagree with that, honestly. I, I understand that it's frustrating because Barcelona didn't go through, but the reason they didn't go through was because of a very silly individual mistake from Araujo. And, that's, and then also mistakes from Cancelo, mistakes from Lewandowski. I don't think it, Barcelona needs a complete rebuild. I think they're in a good position right now. They have a lot of youngsters that are doing very well. They have La Masia to depend on. They need a couple signings in the summer. Yes, I completely agree on that. And I think some players are going to have to be sold in the summer. And that's understandable. But I just disagree with the fact that Barcelona needs a complete rebuild. And I understand it's very frustrating because... You know, like I said, Barcelona, they did have one foot in the door. They had one foot in the semifinals. It was so close. It just wasn't meant to be. But I think Barcelona, they are able to compete in the Champions League. I felt like that was completely different yesterday because in the years prior, yes, I, I didn't think Barcelona's squad was good enough to go far in the Champions League. But yesterday, I mean, Barcelona as a whole, they did prove that they can compete in this competition, and they are in their place to be in the Champions League. And in my opinion, we were one mistake away from being in the semifinals, so I don't think that calls for a rebuild. And there are some question marks around Xavi, there are some question marks around the next coach of Barcelona, and I understand that that's going to be an important decision, well, 100%, I'm, I'm not saying that's not, but I just don't think this team needs a revamp. I don't, I don't think there's some drastic change that needs to be made in the summer. Yes, there's probably going to be a new coach. Yes, there's going to have to be a couple signings that Laporta will make if he wants the squad to be competitive next season. But like the years prior, I just don't feel that same need for a complete 180. I just think Barcelona, they're in a good place right now. And without a few very silly individual mistakes, they would be into the semifinals right now. So I don't think we should be too reactionary about the direction that Barcelona is going. And one very reactionary take that I just wanted to get out of the way completely is Ronald Araujo should be sold for $100 million in the summer. There have been some rumors that Bayern Munich are trying to sign him. And, and do not sell Ronald Araujo. I, I understand there's a lot of frustration because that's such a, a silly mistake. But... He should not be sold. He's he's the best defender that Barcelona have. He's one of the most important players for Barcelona. And he's a captain. He's been such a crucial part of Barcelona for the last five years. And one, one mistake that does not define the player that he is. Of course, it's so frustrating because you think, how could he make a mistake like, like that in such a big moment for Barcelona? I completely admit that it's frustrating. But Ronald Araujo, he is Barcelona. He, he should never be sold. And... I don't think the club is even going to think about selling him, and I think we should all be behind Ron Araujo, and I'm going to post it on, on the video now. It, it was nice to see all the players showing their support for Araujo because I'm sure he feels terrible about it. You know, he knows that, yeah, his mistake ultimately did cost Barcelona a spot in the semifinals. He knows that he should not be sold in the summer. I think that's honestly ridiculous from some fans to say, and we should not forgive all the good that he's done. And how crucial he was in the first leg against PSG. Without some of the blocks, some of his tackles, Barcelona would have been behind going into the second leg. So, you know, yes, it's a terrible mistake, but we should not forget all the good that he's done for Barcelona. So, absolutely, he should be staying at Barcelona. He's a very key piece of, of Barcelona going into the next couple years. And another take that I don't think is as reactionary is Frank de Jong should be sold for $100 million in the summer. If that's around his valuation, and I think I saw somewhere that he is the highest paid midfielder in the world, I do agree 100% that in these bigger moments, he should be taking control of these games. And I understand he just came back from injury. He's not going to be 100% fit. And he's not going to be in complete rhythm of the game. But I just felt like it's been been that way for the last couple years at Barcelona. I just don't feel like he's he's put a stamp on on big games for Barcelona. I just think there he has so much talent. And you talk about you know players like Cancelo and Joao Felix. They talk about how much Frank Young surprised them with how much talent he has. But... I think that kind of shows that maybe he, he does have so much talent. He He's such an amazing player to watch, and the technique that he has, the, his passing, his turns, it's all great. But I, like I said, I just feel like you should be having a stamp on these big matches. You should be showing your place. And, and defensively, I just think 
he he does he does show he is a defensive liability in these big games. And I don't know. You play with a double pivot. You don't have a true defensive midfielder. So, yeah, a lot of the pressure is on Frege de Jong to work back, to track back, and do well defensively. I just think, I don't know, maybe I'm expecting a little bit too much. But Frankie de Jong, I would not be 100% against selling him in the summer. I really like Frankie de Jong as a person. I think he is a big part of Barcelona. But I, I just, I don't know. I think in these big games, I, I would expect someone with the talent of Frankie de Jong to you know, to stand out more in my opinion and just take control and take a grip of the game. And I've said in my previous videos that I don't want Frankie Young to be sold and I don't exactly want that to happen in the summer, but I think he's one of those players that I wouldn't be completely against selling. And again, I think if he goes to Arsenal, if he goes to Bayern Munich, he would do so well in a top team. Man City, he would do so well. There are no doubts about that, but I just, I don't know. The A lot of Barcelona fans are just mad that he doesn't really contribute that much. He doesn't have the best end product. You know, he doesn't make decisive passes. A lot of it is just quick turns and then, you know, playing it off to the side or carrying the ball pretty well. Yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to slander him at all. I think he is a great player, but if you have the possibility of selling him for 100 million in the summer and especially with the the high wages that he's on, I don't think Barcelona would be very much against that. Obviously, you want to keep your best players, but I don't know. I think of Gundogan, hopefully Gavi's back. Hopefully Pedri would be at least a little bit fit next season. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's a difficult one for me, but just Frankie De Jong, I don't know. I'm, I'm expecting more from him, to be completely honest, and maybe that's just me being reactionary because of the result and because that result just happened. I don't know. I just think Frankie De Jong, maybe I'm expecting a little bit more from a player that, you know, he has so much talent and all of his teammates talk about how much talent he has, and we know how much talent he has. It's very clear to look when you just watch him play, but I, I don't know. I feel like the best midfielders in the world, they show up in these big moments. And Frankie de Jong, I saw a tweet that said he doesn't really have any decisive big moments for Barcelona. And I, I sadly, I think I would agree with that because I just, I, to my memory, I don't really remember that many big games where Frankie de Jong has stepped up and just made the game his own. Now, a lot of Barcelona fans are also turning on Cancelo. They're saying that Barcelona should not buy him in the summer. And they're saying, I saw a comment that said, if City don't want him, if Bayern don't want him, why should Barcelona buy him? I think he's a very passionate player. I just think maybe he, he let, you know, his emotion get the best of him. And he, he saw Dembele and he just, you know, he was like, I can win the ball back here. I can make kind of a hard tackle on him. I'll get the ball 100%. I won't make a mistake. But it's a, it's a very crucial mistake. Really, it is. Because obviously, I think it was, it seemed with the way the game was progressing, it was inevitable that they were going to score because you're a man down, you're parking the bus. They just have such a good attack. But Cancelo, I mean, he just speed run that goal for them. He basically handed it to them and said, let me make it easy for you. And and even the first goal when Debelli was back post, I think there are a lot of times when Cancelo is just caught lacking defensively. But I think I also want to remind Barcelona fans that that game against Porto in the group stage, I mean, he was the reason that Barcelona guaranteed their first place spot in their group. Um, because of that goal and assist and that performance overall that he had against Porto, it's one of the best individual performances I've seen from a Barcelona player in a really long time. So I don't want to be too hard on Cancelo because we know defensively, you know, he, he's not great. I mean, he, he is somewhat of a liability defensively, but I think what he provides going forward, it's worth the risk in my opinion. And it's just, it's unfortunate because I don't think anyone would be would be saying Cancelo out or don't buy Cancelo if Araujo had not been sent off. I think that's just, you know, it, Cancelo's bad performance defensively was because they were a man down and because he had to track back and, and it's just high emotion game. I, I don't think it was Cancelo's fault. That's a horrible mistake. Don't get me wrong. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what he was even thinking going into that tackle, but for 15, 20 million, I think Kinsella would still be a big purchase for Barcelona. I think he would be a great addition to the club permanently. So I'm not going to turn on Kinsella because of one really terrible mistake in this game. And another player that some Barcelona fans want gone is Lewandowski. And I mean, you all know if you've been watching my channel, I, I don't want Lewandowski to be at Barcelona next season. I think his form in the last couple months, that has changed drastically. And he has stepped up massively for Barcelona recently, for sure. But I don't think we can forget the, the year that he had where it was just, it felt like he was a passenger the entire game. And I mean, I'm not completely against him staying at Barcelona, but I just have a feeling that the coaches won't bench him because I, I just, I get a sense that his ego is very big and 
there have been some issues, you know, when he gets benched, he gets taken out, he looks salty, he looks mad. But he should know that, you know, I don't, I just don't think he is a guaranteed starter for next season. But depending on who the coach is, I just have a feeling that he would be starting every single game. And, you know, maybe if, maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing if his form continues like it has in the past month. But I don't know, that, that's a difficult one. I, I've said definitely before that I want Lewandowski sold in the summer. But I wouldn't be completely against him staying at Barcelona for another season if his role changes to not starting every single game. But I just have a feeling with with you know the name of Lewandowski that he would be guaranteed to start almost every game next season. So that's where it's a little bit tricky. But I understand people being frustrated at Lewandowski. I think he had a really great performance in the first leg. I mean, that was his best performance ever in a Barcelona jersey to, to the game that he had now. Obviously, it made it very difficult because... Barcelona were playing with a man down. I think a lot of people are frustrated with the fact that he it was such a mediocre attempt to try and block Vitinha's shot. I don't know if you all want to go back and look at that. I mean, Lewandowski just waddles up there, and then he just spreads his legs, and, and Vitinha just shoots it right underneath him. Like, and, and Lewandowski, he's turning his back. It's just such a lazy attempt to block the ball, and then inevitably, inevitably Vitinha scores. So I think that's why a lot of people are frustrated at Lewandowski, and obviously the result overall... I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of indifferent about that. I, I wouldn't mind Lewandowski not being at Barcelona, but I don't know. I, I think he has good leadership qualities. Sometimes his ego is frustrating, and it just feel like he demands the ball from his teammates. But I haven't seen that as much in the last couple of weeks. Maybe that was something Xavi talked to him about. And like I said, he has stepped up massively recently. But, uh, you know, for the future of Barcelona, I wouldn't be against him being sold in the summer. And then another player is Ter Stegen, and I think he made some very important saves yesterday. I think the one he blocked from, I think it was Asensio, that he blocked it with his hand and it just barely went over the goal. I mean, that was very frustrating because that, I mean, it took a bounce right before him, but that's a routine save. That can never be that close. That was really frustrating and, and it made no sense to, to have the ball almost go into the goal after that shot. But he made a couple of good saves yesterday. I think it's always going to be like that with Ter Stegen that you just don't feel 100% safe and secure with him. But given the financial situation, I don't see Barcelona being able to go buy a goalkeeper better than him in the summer. I wouldn't mind him, I mean, being sold, to be honest, because I, I felt like that, even though he has had really important seasons in La Liga for Barcelona, I don't know, I just don't feel completely confident in a big Champions League game, even though yesterday he made some really good saves. I'm, I'm expecting that he's going to stay at Barcelona, and don't get me wrong, I'm completely fine with that. I do think in the next couple years, that is a position that Barcelona, they can look to improve though. That That's my personal opinion. Getting all that negativity out of the way, I just want to give some praise to Gundogan and Rafinha, especially Rafinha because he's just stepped up massively against PSG. He had three goals in two games. And not only that, he was just working as hard as possible. He was just making great plays and he, he steps up massively for Barcelona when they really need it. And I've said before in my previous videos that I wouldn't mind Barcelona selling Rafinha if there's a hundred million offer. And Maybe I could be reactionary because he played so well. And he it just shows how much he wants to be at Barcelona and wants to fight for the badge. I don't think you, you should sell a player like that, honestly. And so I, I'm, I'm going to change my opinion. I've never wanted Rafinha out, but I don't think even if Barcelona receive a 70 million offer, I would want Rafinha gone because he has been one of Barcelona's most decisive players in the past couple of years. So for me, I don't think you sell someone like that, even though a 100 million offer is pretty enticing. I just think Rafinha is a big part of Barcelona and he's one of the players that's always working hard as, po as hard as possible and he has a lot of confidence and he doesn't shy away from the big moments and I think Barcelona, they need more players like that. So Rafinha, I hope he does stay at Barcelona in the summer and I have a feeling that he will. And Gundogan, I mean, I think if Ansu Fati is not at the club next season, then Gundogan should be getting the number 10. I think he just the way that he talked in the press conference, it's just, he, he has so much leadership and quality. I, I just... I wouldn't mind him being the captain of Barcelona next season, depending if Roberto Lee. I don't know. I, I think it would probably be Ter Stegen, but yeah, Gundogan, he, he's he's one of the captains of the team. He's just an incredible addition to Barcelona this season. He was really disappointed because, like all of us, he knew that the game was in Barcelona's hands, and because of that mistake, they let it slip. But yeah, Gundogan and Rafinha, I just want to give some praise because the attitude that they have and, and just saying that they'll bounce back next season... That's really important, and those are the players that you want at Barcelona for the next couple years. And then today, there was also a report that Rafa Marquez is looking likely to be the next coach of Barcelona, and I don't really know how to feel. I think it's pretty frustrating, to be honest, because I think there are a lot of big names on the market right now. 
or at least they there were in, in the last couple months, but Barcelona, they just didn't capitalize on those. I think of Julian Nagelsmann, who looks likely to return to Bayern, and then also Thiago Mata, who just looks like he's signing with Juventus for next season. Those are coaches that I, I would have been really excited if Barcelona would have been able to sign, and it just didn't seem like Barcelona really tried. Of course, I'm not on the inside, so I don't know for sure if they didn't they didn't try at all. But Deco was asked one time about Thiago Mata, and he said, oh, I don't really keep up with, with the Serie A. I don't really know how well he did. You should be keeping up with, with Thiago Mata. I mean, you should be keeping up with one of the brightest young coaches in the world. That should be something, especially when you're looking for a new coach, he should be on your radar. I mean, bare minimum, you should know how he's doing. So I think it's frustrating. Again, I just don't watch Rafa Marquez enough to say, oh, it's going to be a complete failure. But I don't know. I'm not as confident with going into next season if it's only Rafa Marquez that's the coach of Barcelona. I just feel like in this time right now, it's very important to get the next next coach right. Maybe Laporta feels very confident about Rafa Marquez, but I personally don't. I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope if Rafa Marquez is the coach of Barcelona next season that he does very well. But I don't know. I, I think that coaching situation is a little bit frustrating because I feel like there have been some great candidates on the market. And Laporta, I feel like he's just been adamant that he says, we want Xavi to stay. But man, Xavi wants to go. Look for another coach. Uh, you should, I don't know, you should be reactive to that. So, and you should be planning ahead. And I hope, I hope that's the case. I hope they do have a great coach in mind. And I guess we'll just have to see how it goes in the summer. And in the end, I think a lot of Barcelona fans are just upset and frustrated with the res this result. And rightfully so, but I don't think that Barcelona needs a drastic change in the summer. I think they're on the right track. I think they have a great academy. They have a lot of young players. They have a young core that they can build around. And they have players like Gunawan Rafinha that are going to help them in the next couple of years. So I, I understand Barcelona fans being frustrated about this. But in reality, Barcelona would be in the semifinals right now if they didn't have individual silly, silly mistakes. Like, I mean, it's that, that's the most frustrating part is that they deserve to be in the semis. I don't want to say like PSG didn't deserve it, but Barcelona, they had it in their hands and they were the ones that completely gave it away. So it's, it's frustrating. And I understand being reactionary and, and I'm trying not to do that, but yeah, it's, it's hard not to be because you know, you knew that Barcelona, they could have went on to do so much more in that tournament and they had the team to do it. So I don't think they need a complete rebuild I just, yeah, there, there are some signings that need to be made in the summer. Some players are probably going to have to be sold, but they belong in the UCL. And I think they proved that yesterday. You know, the silly mistakes, that's what cost them a spot in the semifinal. And I'm not even going to talk more about the Araujo mistake because we all know how bad that was. But then I think of other mistakes like Lewandowski not closing down Vitinha before the shot and turning away and saying, oh, you, you can shoot if you want. I mean, I don't, I don't mind. It's whatever. You're supposed to block that shot. And, and defending a one goal lead, do everything you can to block the shot. That's the bare minimum. You can't turn away. You can't raise your, your foot. Terrible, terrible from Lewandowski and really disappointing from such an experienced player and one of the best strikers of this generation to turn your back like that and basically give them a free shot and show no effort to block the shot. Terrible from Lewandowski. Then Cancelo, horrible, horrible decision to try and go into a tackle there. And then, yeah, Gunawan could have gotten a penalty. So it's, it's individual mistakes. It's it's small, small margins in this tournament, and that's what we've known all along. But Barcelona, I think they're in the right place now to compete in the Champions League. I think they do have to make signings in the summer. They have to bring in a great coach, but they're they're in their place to compete in the Champions League. It was just due to very small individual mistakes. Well, big, very, very, very big and costly individual mistakes in this tournament. That's the reason they're not in the semifinals, not because of the quality that they lack in the squad, because... The team is, is good enough, and they proved it yesterday. And hopefully my mood isn't too much of a downer. I kind of just also woke up, so I, maybe that's why I'm not as excited. And obviously that was a very frustrating result yesterday, so yeah, I'm, I apologize. I mean, I, I know it's terrible from Barcelona to to give away a lead like that in that fashion as well. And for those events to unfold, uh, it's just it's really frustrating for Barcelona fans around the world. But in the end, Barcelona is still Barcelona. you, you got to support them even in the difficult times, so... I think Barcelona will be back, and I don't think they need a complete revamp. I think some reactionary takes are understandable, but, you know, I, I think Barcelona, they can build on this, and I hope, you know, for the young players especially, I hope they have a lot of hunger from this game, and I hope they come back stronger next season, and I think they will. Thank you very much for watching my video. I do appreciate it. I'm going to try and post every day if I can. I might miss one every once in a while, but every day if I can, because I love talking about this stuff. There's so much news around Barcelona, so I want to continue making videos, and 
Thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Visca Varsa and peace.